This is the weapons test. Up first, the kill test. Doug? To see what kind of lethal damage your halberd will do, we'll take your halberd and deliver thrust, hacks, and attempt to dismount that dummy with its hook. Fill you up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Well, Phil, I would love to test your blade, but I'm still recovering from an injury. So to help me horse around with your weapon today, please welcome my brother, RJ Markaida. Let's do this. I spent a long time making that thing, and I want to see it work. All right, Phil, your spear tip is sharp, not only at the point, but its edges also. Your axe head, not only did it dig in and break the ribs, it went in and cut the internal organs that were behind the ribs. And your hook blade, it dug into the ribs and dismounted the dummy from the horse. Overall, your weapon here will kill. Thank you. Good job. All right, Jonathan, you're up next. You ready? Let's do it. My halberd's a brute. I'm excited to hear Doug tell me it'll kill. That'll make my son happy. I want to see some blood and gore and guts. All right, Jonathan, on the thrust, your spear tip right here penetrated deep and created a deep wound channel. Your axe head here, pretty much it was just the tip that penetrated into the chest and also it's the diaphragm. Your hook broke the ribs, got into the organs, and dismounted the whole dummy from the horse. The most important thing about this whole thing is it will kill. All right, bladesmiths, next up is the strength test. Ben? To test the strength and durability of your halberds, I will be chopping into this corrugated sheet steel. Remember, this test is all about what the steel does to your halberds and not what your halberds do to the steel. Phil, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Well, Phil, your halberd held up perfectly. All of the faces on it are still razor sharp. There's no deformation that I can see. Overall, very well done. Thank you. Jonathan, you're up. You ready? Get your sound. Well, Jonathan, on the hits, your edges held up pretty well. I don't see any problems with them. The one thing that does concern me is the blade's taken a bit of a bend to one side here. But the edges and the point seem to have done pretty well in the penetration. The whole thing held up, still solid, well done. Up next is the sharpness test, and for that, I give you to Dave. All right, bladesmiths, to test the sharpness of your blades, I'll be cutting through these fish using both the blade and the tip of your halberds. Now, a sharp blade should cut through those fish nice and clean. Phil, you ready? Go for it. The slicing test is the scariest one for me because the edges on my halberd are thick. I don't know how well they'll do cutting something fairly soft. All right, the cuts look very clean. They're just nice slices. I really like the design of this weapon. Uh, the handle feels good. It's got some heft to it, but it's balanced nicely. But most off, it's definitely a sharp weapon. You built the cutter. Good job. Thank you, sir. Jonathan, you ready? Always. Phil's blade performed pretty good in the fish test. I didn't know we were going to cut fish with it. I'm sweating the geometry. All right, Jonathan, 
You went with actually trying to forge this all out of one piece, which I appreciate. It's just there's still a lot of that weight here. The socket's very, very thick. It's covered, but you can feel the edge of it. The shape, you see that historically quite a bit. But for this test, it's a little harder to find the sweet spot on that shape. With that tip being knocked out of alignment a little bit, harder to target, harder to index. But it's a good cutter. Nicely done. Phil, Jonathan, you've both done some amazing work on your German halberds, and they perform very well in our weapons tests. However, in this arena of competition, only the best weapon can win. And our next Forged and Fire champion is. Phil, congratulations. You are a new Forged and Fire champion. Jonathan, unfortunately, your weapon did not make the cut. Ben Abbott's going to tell you why. Jonathan, at the end of the day, your halberd was heavy, more difficult to wield, and took a bend in the strength test. And for those reasons, we have to let you go. Jonathan, please surrender your weapon. I feel honored to have competed with Phil and the other two guys in this competition. Had a good time. If you do compete in this, be ready. Have your skills on point, because you will be tested. Phil, congratulations. You are our new Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. Is all the hard work worth it? The hard work was worth it. I'm very pleased to have been here. It was wonderful. Well, Phil, please present your weapon to the judges. With pleasure. Philip Baldwin won, and Philip Baldwin feels very good about winning. I would not have missed the experience of appearing on Forge and Fire for anything in the world. I met some really fine people I would have never met in any other circumstances. And I really thank my fellow competitors for being here. Mike, Alex, welcome back to the Forge. You've had five days at your home forge just to work on your horseman's axis. Mike? Tell us about your weapon. It's a little rougher on the edges, but I think it will perform well, and I can't wait to see it happen. Alex? It, everything just fell into place for me, even though I had to make some last minute changes, and I'm looking forward to seeing it tear apart some ballistics dummies. All right, gentlemen, up first, the kill test. Doug? The horseman's axe, it's actually two weapons in one. It's got an edge that can lacerate and chop, and a spike that can penetrate and crush bones. To see what kind of lethal damage your axe will do, I will take your horseman's axe and deliver lethal blows on this ballistics dummy. Mike, you're up first. You ready? Yes, I am. As you can see, I'm recovering from an injury. So one of my students will have the satisfaction of testing your weapon. Well, Mike, let's talk about your weapon. Your edge over here is sharp. It lacerated deep into the bowels right here. Your spike definitely caved in all the way into the chest and straight into the heart. The only issue we have is that your handle is a little bit on the rounded side. So there is a tendency to slightly roll. But overall, your weapon will kill. Thank you. Alex, you're up next. You ready? Yes. Let's do this. All right. I'm pretty proud of what I created. It's just a little heavy, and that's a bit of a concern going in. Sweet. <laughs> Alex, your weapon here is a little bit on the heavy side. But you know what? It is well balanced. The edge of your blade here cut deep into chest cavity, and it broke the bones. Your spike here right into the heart. And of course, on the swing, it pretty much just disemboweled the dummy right there. Your weapon will kill. Yes, thank you. Next up is the strength test. Jake? Now, we know ice can be very brutal on an edge, so I'm going to take your horseman's axes and repeatedly strike into these large blocks of ice to see how well they hold up. Mike, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, I am. I think Alex has the advantage at this time. So going into the ice block test, I'm concerned there may be a fail point in the head handle area. But this is it. Very nervous. Oh. oh, 
And Mike, unfortunately, we had a serious failure on your axe. With this weld point in the junction of the belt hook. Now, Alex, you still have to pass this test. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. There's only one thing standing between me and a $10,000 check, and it's really big, and it's made of ice. Your horseman's axe did quite a job on that ice. Everything's still tight. And your edge is still razor sharp. Thank you. So all in all, very nicely done. Bladesmiths, our weapons tests here are designed to be exceptionally brutal in order to set your weapons apart from one another. Mike, your blade did not survive our strength test. For that reason, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. OK. I am disappointed, but when I go home, I'm going to have a smile on my face. Forged and fire has risen me from the dead somehow. I will take this forward with me for the rest of my life. Alex, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. <laughs> it's surreal. It's really surreal. Well, come on over here and shake our hands. Oh, uh, I can't really fathom that I've won. Like, <laughs> I, I, I won definitely tops everything else I've ever done. Being the Forge and Fire champion just shows I've applied what I've always tried to teach others. Never stop learning. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I'll take your glaive gizam and deliver thrusts and slashes on this deer carcass. Nick, you're up first. You ready? Guess so. Let's do this. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm just excited to see what's going to happen. I'm hoping this is the only big dead animal I have to deal with today. To be my arm today, Bladesmiths, please welcome back RJ Markaida. Today, he will wield your weapon. First up, right here on your edge, it picked up a chip. On another side of this, you can feel where the edge also rolled. But this weapon is sharp. On the initial thrust, it's got a geometry right there that penetrated deep into the carcass, your edge right here. On slashing, it lacerated easily on the side of this deer carcass. On the third cut, the weight of this weapon is so balanced that it's easy to lacerate all the way through. Your weapon will kill. Thank you. All right, Alex, your turn. His seems to do really well. It, it stabs right through. It slashes real nicely. So I'm excited to see what mine does. And like a little bit like throwy uppy, like to right there. Alex, your tip is sharp enough to lacerate all the way through. On the slash of this edge, it's lacerated easily on the side rib of this particular carcass. On the wide swing, it did break half of the spine off. It is, as you can see, a little bit on the wider side. And with a heavy weapon like this, a wide handle can make it hard to control. Yeah. But the most important thing, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, the pike chop. That was intense. I wasn't ready for that. Often in pike warfare, the glaives or weapons like them are used as a secondary line of defense to push the pike up out of the way and or to chop at the pike shaft. So to test the strength and durability of your weapons, including the hook on the back, I'll be pushing these pikes up into position, then chopping at them with the blades. All right, Nick, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. That's it. That's pretty good. 
All right, so Nick, it doesn't look like your weapon took any more damage to the edge. The weight of your blade is very nicely balanced. The good design, definitely a strong blade. Nicely done. Thank you. Alex, you ready? Yes, sir. I'm in and out of, I think I got this, to I have no idea what's going to happen. So I still feel I got a good shot. I think I'm still in the running. Kick ass. Don't break it. Be nice. Brutal, dude. <laughs> First off, your blade did take some damage here. They're very small chips and rolls. Your flanges here are just wide enough that when I pushed forward, I managed to grab two rows of pikes and push them back at the same time. Balance is nice on it. The shaft is pretty wide. It's not too big, but it's right on the outside edge of what's comfortable for my hand. But everything held up, everything's solid. Thank you. Because Alex's blade picked a couple of chips up, we're really even closer to even at this point. All right, gentlemen, now it's time for the sharpness test. To test the sharpness of your blade, I'll be cutting these ropes. Now, that releases the bag, and then I'll be cutting the bag. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about what your weapons do to these targets. Nick, you're up first. Are you ready? Nick. This is obviously the final test that's coming up. It's going to be the deciding factor who wins. I think we're still running neck and neck, so it's fun to have a tight race. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, Nick cut through the bags really cleanly, and what I really like is the balance of this weapon. It's very easy to maneuver. I didn't have to fight the weapon. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Alex, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. I feel like we are pretty neck and neck this far. If mine doesn't do well, I think it's pretty clear what's going to happen. And if it does, I'm just at a loss. I have no idea. All right, your blade. It is wicked sharp. Thank you. This passed right through the rope with very little resistance at all, and, and it cut the bags beautifully. The balance of your blade is a little bit more to the tip. Mm -hmm. So the one thing about this blade when I cut with it is slowing it down after the cut. But uh, it's a beautiful cutter. Did a great job. Thank you. Nice and done. Nick, Alex, you've both done an incredible amount of work on your finale weapons. However, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion, and that champion is... Nick. Congratulations. You are our next Forge and Fire champion. Alex, unfortunately, your weapon didn't make the cut. David Baker's going to tell you why. Alex, you both brought us beautiful weapons. Both your weapons took damage. It really came down to that large handle and the forward weight, and it's that fine a point that's sending you home. Alex, please surrender your blade. So the final judgment, I am not the Forged and Fire champion. It's definitely a long road to get all the way here, and it is disappointing, but Nick won. He absolutely killed it. He made a great weapon. I'm super happy for him. It was a tight race, so it's been a fun experience, but it's, it's back to work now. Nick, congratulations. You are our new Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job. Thank you. Nick, please present your weapon to the judges. I'm Forging the Fire Champion. That's so weird, but awesome. What can I say? I made the right choices with the handle, slimmed it down a little bit. I got to make some really cool stuff, meet some really cool people, and being champion, that's just a really cool bonus. Bladesmiths, the arming sword. It's a cut and thrust weapon. To test the lethality of your arming sword, I will deliver slashes and thrust on these poor carcasses. John, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. That hide is super thick. To get through that, you really need a very fine edge and not a lot of weight behind it. And I didn't build that. <laughs> Mm. 
All right, John, let's talk about your arming sword here. It's heavy. It did cut on some parts of the carcass, other parts it just bounced off. Thrusting-wise, though, it did what it was designed for. This will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, Drew, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. When I saw John's blade hit the carcass the first few times, it didn't really cut so great. So I'm worried about my sharpness on my blade. All right, Drew, this is a very sharp blade, a great thrusting blade. And I like how you put a counterbalance right here because all the weight is nicely distributed so where I can thrust and slash. Your blade, sir, will kill. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to our strength test. One of my favorites, the ice block chop. And we supersized it. What I'm gonna do is take each of your swords, I'm gonna beat them repeatedly and viciously into this big chunk of ice. It's gonna test the overall construction of your sword as well as its edge holding ability. Now, what your swords do to the ice is secondary compared to what the ice does to your swords. And John, you're up first. How you feeling, buddy? <laughs> Nervous. Well, we're gonna do it anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is very heavy, very hard to control. Also, aside from having gaps in your shoulders here, you've got a pretty good bend in the blade. And that was there before I started. Not a lot of edge left, but you survived. Drew, how are you feeling? I'm ready. Good, so am I. Jay's tough on blades. Ice is tough on blades. It doesn't matter who's swinging on it. And I'm just praying at this point that nothing fails. <laughs> Drew, this is a beautiful sword. Thank you. Blade is still razor sharp, which is very impressive with an ice block chop. That being said, the ice block chop is meant to be brutal. It's meant to test the overall structural integrity of your sword from tip to pummel. Problem is, I'm holding your pummel in this hand instead of this hand. So that's an issue. Yeah. Drew, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure. I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I'm sad that my blade failed, but I feel really good about the fact that I was able to make something completely outside of my wheelhouse. But none of that matters if the pommel comes flying off. If the functionality is in there, the aesthetics really do not matter. I had a ton of fun. I would do it again in a second. I'm super excited to get back to the West Coast and just get back to work chipping away at my custom orders. John, congratulations. Be the next Forge and Fire champion. Good job. Thanks. You'll be receiving a check for $10,000. How do you feel? I didn't want to win like that, but I feel pretty good. I made butter knives in the first round. I come back with a beast of an arm and sword, and now I'm Forge and Fire champion. Good job, brother. When I get home, the first thing I'm doing is buying a press and get right back out to the shop and forge some more. It is only driving me to do it more. Bladesmiths, this is the strength test. In history, chainmail was used to defend knights against blades and swords, and even today, it protects divers from sharks. To test the strength and durability of your daggers, I am going to be slashing and stabbing into this chainmail, once each with either side of your blades. Remember, it's not what happens to the chainmail. It's what happens to your dagger that counts. David, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. 
Uh, I didn't really have a lot of time to get the edge where I wanted to be. That could be a problem. Well, David, the guard is sharp at the top. It did bite into my left hand as I'm stabbing. Another two seconds on the grinder would have fixed that. There's a little bit of edge deformation from the chopping, but your tip held up perfectly. I don't see any problems there. Overall, good work. Thank you. Josh, how are you feeling? Pretty good. All right, let's do this. Josh, not a huge fan of the welding the cross guard on here. I mean, it really puts a weak spot right where you need the most strength. There was a little bit of edge deformation, but overall, it stayed tight. Nice job. Thanks a lot. Brian, you ready? Absolutely. Given the catastrophic failure that I experienced, when Ben picks up my dagger, I am terrified there could be steel flying across the forge, which would never be a good thing. Well, Brian, the handle is big. There's a lot of brass here, so the whole thing is really heavy. There's a little bit of edge deformation from the cut right up near the weld, but otherwise, it stayed solid. Nice job. Thank you. I am relieved. It did what it was supposed to with the chain mail. And if there were a critical failure, I'd be wearing a piece of blade in my chest. All right, gentlemen, to test the sharpness of your edge, I'll be slicing into these fish once with each edge of your knife. Brian, you're up first. You ready? Absolutely. OK. Brian, the edge profile of your blade is pretty stout. It's sharp up here, but the section that went through the chain mail, most of that edge is just slightly rolled over. So it cuts, but it doesn't cut the way I would like it to cut. Josh, you're up next. I'm ready. Let's do it. OK, Josh, up here, I can run my fingers right along the side of this blade. Your blade has a very wide convex edge. You can see with the fish, I dented it. As a purely thrusting dagger, it's very effective. Uh, as a cutter, not so much. All right, Dave, it's your turn. You ready? That's why I'm here. OK. All right, Dave. The first cut, beautiful. On the back side of the blade, I can feel a bit of a rolled spot. But it's a good cutter. Nicely done. Thank you. Bladesmiths, the judges have made a final decision. It's time for one of you to leave the forge. The bladesmith leaving the forge is Josh. Your blade did not make the cut. Josh, this was an extremely close decision. But in the end, it came down to the fact that in the sharpness test, your blade just wasn't sharp enough to cut. That's why we're letting you go. I just don't understand. Josh, please surrender your dagger. I was definitely disappointed that my blade didn't you know, slice all the way through the fish, but no regrets. I had a fun time. Me and my father, you know, we went through the same experience. Even though I'm not going through, I'm sure my dad's going to be extremely proud of me. Jeff, Craig, because your weapons are war hammers, we decided to leave the forge and bring them to a location a little bit more benefiting their medieval style. 
We are now going to put both of your weapons through three different tests. First up, the sharpness test. Dave? Gentlemen, the Warhammer was primarily a close quarters weapon, but it was devastating to anything it went up against, which occasionally was a castle door. So I'm going to take several strikes against this oak door to see how well the pick on your weapon penetrates. Craig, you ready? I'm ready. I see the door set up, and I'm thinking, my Warhammer is just going to demolish this door. I'm pretty confident in my hammer. Well, Craig, this really felt great in my hands. It's got a nice balance to it. Your pick, I don't see any real distortion on it. The shape of your pick, with that nice drop hook to the end of it, mm -hmm. really penetrated well. And you could see, when I got it in that door, how hard it was to remove. Yeah. Nicely done. Appreciate it. Beautifully executed. Thank you. So, Jeff, your turn. You ready? We'll smash it. <laughs> All right. So we started losing pieces. I could tell that they're on there only decoratively, so I was able to continue on. Good thing, head's still right and tight. All right. The way your pick leans out towards the front gave a lot of penetration. I was really able to just blow parts out of this door. Mm -hmm. Nicely designed, Thank well you. executed. Thanks. Dave Spence, now it's time for the kill test. Warhammers have been known to deliver piercing blows into armor and crush the person behind it. I will deliver strikes at this ballistic dummy that's wearing armor. Then we can see how much lethal damage your Warhammer can give. Craig, you're up. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Craig, love the balance of this blade. No indentations. Now let's see how much damage you put on the dummy. No visible broken bones, but it definitely did pierce the skin. Nice. This will definitely kill. Nicely done, sir. Thank you. Jeff, you're up next. Are you ready? Yes, sir. The kill test, it's the most important part to me. I wanted to smash that piece of plate steel, break some ribs, and ruin some organs. Well, Jeff, let's say the other lunge did break off. Do you know what? This is still very sturdy. But let's see how much damage it's done internally. He's got some broken ribs right here. Broken bones throughout. It went all the way through. And even through armor, you pierce the skin and you cause some internal damage. Jeff, your weapon will kill. Awesome. Good job. Thank you. Gentlemen, this is the strength test. The Warhammer was a favorite on the medieval battlefield. So I'm going to take your Warhammer and to test its strength and durability, I'm going to take several blows against our stone wall and see how much of this I can move. You know, I'm feeling pretty nervous. I, I know what it's capable of. I've, I've worked with it at home. But still yet, watching somebody else do it is nerve-wracking for me. Wow, that, that held up really well. And that's pretty much a hole I could crawl through. <laughs> That'll work. Perfect. So the handle, what I do like is I could swing it one-handed, mm -hmm. but with two hands, I could generate a heck of a lot of energy. Beautiful job. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Jeff, you're up. Let's knock it down. It's long, and when I was swinging, it was way out in front of me as opposed to being close and in control. 
Shot some sparks off. <laughs> right, seen that. All in all, a good performance. Great. Well, gentlemen, so you've given the judges a lot to consider. We'll see you back at the forge. Craig, Jeff, you were given five days at your home forge to fabricate war hammers, and they both performed very well in our weapons tests. But there can only be one forged in fire champion. Jay? Craig, that's a great piece. Your fit and finish is outstanding. And I love the fact that you can see the differential heat treat in the hammer head and beak. There is a slight delamination in one corner of the hammer face. That does concern me a little bit, though. Jeff? If there's a word that they call functional art, you have it right there. The beautiful design you have of that hammer is amazing. My only concern was during the kill test, the Langer came off, could have been better secured. Gentlemen, it was not an easy decision. Both of your weapons are superb, but there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Craig, you are the Forged and Fire champion. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, your weapon did not make the cut. Jeff, what piece is coming off of it and the fact that it can only really be used as a two-handed weapon, those things added together started to become a problem. Please surrender your Warhammer. I respected the judge's decision. If I knew what I knew now, I would have changed some things. Craig, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. It was a fun challenge. Good Craig, job. you will also be receiving a check for $10,000. I'm just stoked. It's crazy. In this experience, it was a grueling process. You know, I got to do something that I really enjoyed and I'm really passionate about. I came here for my son. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. This is a kill test, a Knight's Templar sword, an iconic weapon battle tested throughout history. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, we'll take your sword and deliver killing blows on this ballistic dummy. Brian, you're up first. Going into testing, I'm uh, wondering if I spent enough time on the grind. I know that the quench was good, so there will be blood. I'm quite certain of that. I would love to test your blade, but as you can see, I'm still recovering from an injury. So to be my arm today, please welcome RJ Markaida, my brother. He will have the pleasure of wielding your weapons. Oh. Your sword is a little bit on the heavier side, but because of the pummel you have over here, it actually balances it out. There are areas that are sharp, and there are areas that are not as sharp. On the final blow, that edge has proven to be very sharp and actually would disembowel this ballistic dummy. Your sword, sir, will kill. All right, David, it's your turn. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do this. Brian's blade hit cut. It's slashed, it's stabbed. We got some competition here today. Just can't wait to see how mine goes. <laughs> that is one of the sharpest swords I've ever come across. It's wicked scary. The cuts are lacerating almost in half. Without a doubt, your weapon will kill. Awesome. Ben? Gentlemen, to test the strength and durability of your edges, I'm going to attack these fully armored knights. But this test is all about what the armor does to your sword, not what your sword does to the armor. Brian, you're up first. Are you ready? Absolutely. Brian, your edge held up really well. It's a very obtuse grind that lends itself to this kind of test. The handle was comfortable. It's a nice shape. I was able to index very well. It stayed straight in the tests and didn't pick up any damage. Well done. Thank you. David, you're up next. Oh, 
Well, Dave, you have a much finer edge on this sword, and it's picked up a little bit of rolling. There's some edge deflection right here. You can hear it. But all in all, very good sword. Thank you, sir. So next up is the sharpness test, and for that, I'll give you to Dave. All right, gentlemen, next up, the swinging sandbag slice. I will cut this rope with one edge of your blade, releasing that sandbag, and then cutting that with the other edge of your blade. Let's see if they still have an edge. Ryan, you're up. Are you ready? I am more than a little bit nervous, because Dave's weapon is clearly a slicer, and parts of my blade were not as sharp as others. First off, there are sections of this blade that just don't have much of an edge. That first cut and just skated up the rope. Second cut, bit in, went right through. You can see how there's a lot of tearing at the edge of that bag, as opposed to a clean slice through it. I would have loved to have seen a little bit more edge, especially on that front half. David, you ready? Absolutely. OK. Your sword's sharp, very sharp. Pass through the rope, no problem. Pass through the bag, no problem. As far as the design of your sword, would have loved to have seen a counterbalance on this. Uh, this would be nice on a dagger. It's very small for this sword. Without that counterbalance, all that weight is so far forward. But it's a cutter. It's definitely sharp. Nicely done. Thank you. Bladesmiths, the judges have completed their deliberation, and they've made a final decision. You've both put in a lot of work here, but there can only be one Forged and Fire champion, and that champion is Dave. Congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Brian, unfortunately, your Crusader sword did not make the cut. Brian, I really applaud the fact that you brought a lot of yourself to that sword. In the end, it came down to your sword just wasn't as sharp as your competitors, and that's why we've got to let you go. Understood. Brian, please surrender your sword. David's sword cut better than mine. He outsmithed me. That's the way it goes, man. In the end, there can be only one. I may make another Knights Templar Crusader sword. I've still got 2,000-year-old oak bits at home. I still have holy water at home. Anything can happen. David, congratulations. You are the Forged of Fire champion. And that's a title that comes with a check for how much? 10 grand. That's right, $10,000. Good job. Victory feels good. In this competition, it showed me that I can push myself a little harder and uh, get more done. Looking forward to getting back home. First thing I'm going to do is fix my bike and go for a ride. Smiths, welcome back. For the types of tests that we wanted to do with your weapons, we had to change locations from the forge to a location that provides a little bit more maneuverability. Yeah. Now it's time to find out whether or not they're works of art or deadly weapons of war. While the Crusader sword was quite powerful and effective on foot and sword to sword combat, there was a method of delivery that made it even more destructive from horseback. That rider is going to use your weapons to attack that ballistics gel torso that's wearing a great helm, gorget, and tunic. Before we put your swords through the kill test, we first want to see if they cannot break when subjected to a blow delivered from on top of a horse at full gallop. Okay. I suggest we get out of the way. I'm very nervous. Full gallop on horseback. That's a lot of power to put into a sword. Dave, you're up first. Are you ready? I ain't going to get any readier. Three, two, one, engage. <laughs> nice hit. So seeing the rider go up against this dummy with my sword, and it did not break on impact. 
That is absolutely awesome. Pete, your sword's up next. Let's see some blood. I feel great that my sword held up well, but it didn't cut through the cloth armor. To assess the damage and perform the kill test, I'm gonna hand you over to Doug. Okay, Dave. It's got some weight to it. I could see if your sword should feel a bit heavy in the hand. Slashing feels good. Let's see if it'll cut. Okay. see a point, it's like a spear. Beautiful thrusting capability. It's a killer. I had a lot of anxiety, but I did really good. At this point, I'm ecstatic. Pete. So I'm now testing for thrusting with length. It's got a lot of weight to it. Let's see what it's gonna do on a kill test. Let's see. It will kill. All right, gentlemen, that concludes the kill test. Now we're gonna head back to the forge where we are going to perform the strength test. Welcome back. Looks like your blades are standing up to our tests, but we have one left. We have the strength test. Okay. Now I'm gonna turn you over to Dave, who's an expert in European sword design and usage. So we're done with the kill test at the arena. We're neck and neck on performance. Gentlemen, a sword in combat went through extreme stresses. So to test this, I'm gonna take five blows against these femurs and see how far through we can get with each of your weapons. Okay. Pete, you ready? I'm ready. All right. As soon as I see that they're going to be chopping cow bones, that makes me really nervous. And while I was chopping this, this ring up here, pretty rough on the hand. I'm just happy that my sword is still in one piece at the end of this. <laughs> Got about halfway through that bone, just blowing pieces off of it. And still has an edge. Good. Nice job. Thank you. Dave, you're up next. You ready? Sure. <laughs> I'm seeing these femur bones. I'm getting ready to almost throw up. I don't want to see this destroyed. stress in that blade. No kidding. You can see the edge folded over. Yeah. Sort of bent right around that point of impact right there. You can see we chopped right through this bone. About three blows to crack that open. Watching Dave work on those bones with my sword is the absolute most nerve-wracking, stomach-twisting experience that I've ever had as a knife maker. Well done. Until the judges say one way or the other, I'm still, I'm still nervous. You've both been outstanding competitors through three rounds of competition. But there can only be one Forged in Fire champion. Jay. Oh, Pete. That Damascus blade was beautiful. 
I mean, getting all those welds folded together, grinding that all evenly, heat treating it the way you did, it stood up to all the tests. You did a wonderful job on that piece of steel. I had a couple of issues with the way your handle was put together with that spacer. The spacer really started chewing into my hand. I just couldn't get a good grip up around the top of this sword. That's an issue. Comments for Dave? Well, Dave, even though the overall look of your sword and the design of your handle was very appealing, obviously it was a heat treatment issue. During the tests, your blade folded over, and that really bit you in the testing. Dave, I love the design of your blade. Very clean lines. Your handle felt very good in the hand. It's sharp, it thrusts well, but in the end, it failed when we started slicing the bones. Pete, you are the Forged in Fire champion. Congratulations. Dave, your sword felt great in the hand. But when I used it on those bones, boy, it just bent right over the top. And a heat treat issue like that, we just can't let that through. Dave, you did an outstanding job. Please surrender your weapon. The judge's decision was what it was. And if I can't change it, then why worry about it? I had a tremendous time doing this. It was an education, a wonderful experience, and definitely one that I'm never going to forget. Pete, congratulations. You're receiving a check for $10,000. That's pretty nice. Yeah. How do you feel? I, I feel great. I feel really good. I think my wife, we get to Hawaii, we're going to lie back and relax. She's had to put up with me being gone for this. She deserves it.